Hello guys and welcome back to my monk. We're on the big experience weekend. I am going to try to fight giants. I thought the experience was amazing here and I know why now. They have an experience event going on for Memorial Day weekend. So let's take advantage of it and let's get this level. Looks like it's just now getting dark. We're gonna fight giants in here and outside everywhere we can. Let's see who's in zone. Hopefully no one's here in the giant fort except myself. It's unlikely. There's probably gonna be someone here. Like the 27 necro named Chuckles. Maybe there's a group here. But I logged out right next to the spawn which is perfectly placed for me. In fact, I need to check and see how often this place refreshes spawns. Let's go to zones. Zone, zone, zones. There he's running. Stop. I ought to give him a wedgie. And that would stink. Okay, good loot. Good times. I'm drinking a Red Bull. I feel like I'm 20 again. Sit here and take a rest while I look up how fast the zone respawn timer is. Well, they say it's 6 minutes and 40 seconds. If that's the case, I get to sit here and fight these. By the way, I went from 10 to 13%, so that was a 3% experience gain. I could even fight greens with this kind of XP bonus. Well, this guy just come walking right next to me. I was laid out, feigned death while I was fixing food. I heard a pow, pow, pow. So I came back to the computer and here he was. Saw a necro running by, so I'm not the only one in camp. The other one's going to spawn any second now, so I have to be ready. This isn't the, the static spawn either. This is just a roamer. <clears throat> and he's doing a lot of damage to me. Let me clear my throat. Okay, back with clear throat. Um, yeah, these are still tough. I want some big experience here. So my goal is to get this guy at least halfway through the level. And then I'm going to jump on. Um, it's between the mage and the rogue. I can't decide which one I'm going to use. I got a lot of views on the wizard. Uh, group play inside Blackboro, but a lot of people are saying hey, you're just wasting your time I'm not wasting my time, but telling me that I'm just gonna run into so many issues in the future And I might want to hurry early on reconsider wizard Because people don't really care about wizards for groups I'll be sitting down um, Just waiting to nuke but they say mage is so much better for grouping. What is that behind this rock? I saw a... Oh, it's the name of this corpse. Oh, it's... No, it's that guy down there. Wow, he got below 50% life. Let's see what we get. 13% XP right now. So that gave me 3%. And I was getting, like, way more experience on the other guy. See if I can do a quick. Where's my bind wound? Ah, I'm at 49% XP. I mean, 49% health. Oh, it's not gonna work. All right, I'm about to jump in this fight. I'm up to 78% life. I think Mend is gonna be ready very soon, so I just wanna go ahead and get it started on this fight. I just don't want, there's other people in this camp and I just don't want them grabbing it. Everybody's online because of this experience event going on. So it's going to be busy here. I'm at 80%. Let's go ahead and start. Hopefully I didn't jump the gun and fight too soon. Early on we have Fleeting Fury proccing. It does give me a nice boost to attack and AC for a short time.
Oh, he did some massive damage to me. It's about an even fight. Actually, I'm winning now. And men will be active right after this fight, or at the very end of it. I am getting, like, pushed back every once in a while, and I have to keep scooting forward otherwise. It says I'm not in range. I hate that. It happens all the time lately. To make sure I'm t really close to him. Right up in his crotch, actually. Alright, he's about to start running. Let's go ahead and use Intimidation. And there is Mend. I used Mend because I want to restart the... Refresh the consumption timer on it. Ah, come on. I can't see what I'm doing. Sixteen percent. What do we go to? Nineteen. So it seems like they're all giving me about three percent, which is pretty good. Because Ixar's already got an experience hit penalty for being so cool and awesome. I'm going to go to the entrance because there's two always out there. And let's survey if there's any... How many are up? Because there's another player out here fighting. There's plenty up. Okay, so I'm going to try to fight one of these by the entrance and then go back to my static spawn spot, which is the cool spot in the whole... Whoa! There's plenty here. Look at that one with the hammer. I think you got that hammer flattening. So what can we fight out here? Let's actually sneak. Ah, sneak failed. I'm gonna sneak by and I'm gonna grab one of these. If I can get sneak to work. Ah! Doesn't wanna work, damn it. Can I pull this one? Well, that one's blue. Let's try sneak again. Three times it failed. It sucks. Okay. Feign death. Um, what is this one? I want to fight the green ones, actually, because if I fight green ones, they give me 2% XP, and I can just kill them over and over. All right. Go back to your spot, and I'll fight this one. God, look at them all. Tons of them. I'm spoiled for choice here. That's what they say in England. I'm spoiled for choice. If there's a lot of options available, you're spoiled for choice. Now, here we go. I'm going to get this guy here. We're going to edge closer. You, sir. He was ugly. Well, look at his fingers. Looks like he's got rheumatoid arthritis. There used to be some old radio commercials uh, for Gold Bond medicated powder. If you're really old like me, you'll remember commercials for Hover Around. They're motorized electric scooters. And the, the commercial used to go, hover around, hover around. Some old lady's going to the Grand Canyon. She's riding her hover around right up to the edge. And uh, she goes to the edge of the Grand Canyon and yells, hover around. And it echoes off the caverns. <laughs> Canyons. And this guy used to sing on the commercials. Hover around takes me where I want to go. And then in the late 90s, there used to be these commercials during daytime television. Um, I'm trying to remember how it goes, but it was about uh, structured settlements. It's my money and I want it now. Eight seven sec eight seven seven. Oh, I can't remember the way it goes. It's my money and I want it now. So what they do is, if you got a structured settlement that pays you in monthly increments, they will absorb that structured settlement and give you 
I don't know, probably half of what it was going to pay out and say, here, here's money right away and we'll collect your structured settlement, which pays probably double what they're going to give you. And it was a way to just get money to people and just stealing free money, really. People need their money now because everyone's paycheck to paycheck. And they would play it during daytime when a lot of people were unemployed. You know, it's like, hey, everybody else has a weekday job is at work and you're sitting there watching TV. So they used to play a lot of commercials during daytime, during the uh, court show TV time when they played Judge Judy and Divorce Court and all those um, talk shows and they would play like commercials for different colleges to change careers and stuff like that. I remember those. Oh, he's after us. I'm playing possum on him. Look how big he is. Imagine if he stepped on me right now. I'd probably pee out blood. Oof. Bust my bladder. All right. Oh, heck. Oh, there's two of them. The other one just kind of disappeared. <laughs> he went down in the ditch and his head disappeared. So we're at 65% life and 21% XP. Let's do it. I could live in that boot. That boot would be like a sleeping bag. You can camp in it, just lay one out and just... I'm sure it would smell so horrible though. But let's pretend it didn't stink like giant foot. You could like hop in that and it would be like a sleeping bag. I used to like sleeping bags and camping outside. You think it's all fun to go camping, right? During the daytime, it's like, oh, this is going to be so fun. We're out camping in the woods. And then night comes, and then all of a sudden you're like, I'm freezing. I want to go home. My brother and I went camping once. This is my youngest brother. We went camping to a screen shelter. By the way, I'm 90% hit points. I'm watching it now. Let's start trying to intimidate him. It never works when I need it to work. So anyways, we went camping and um, at a screen shelter and there was a group of girls. Shoot, I need to feign death in a second. Bunch of girls, like high school age girls, camping in the same screen sheltered area. Damn, I'm down to 12%. Oh, damn. 4%. Man, I was so greedy. So these girls were all camping and they weren't very prepared to camp. My brother and I had a screen shelter and the screen shelter had a power outlet. So he brought a space heater. It was a low powered space heater that wouldn't trip the breaker. And we had sleeping bags. So, you know, of course, between the two of us, we'd had the space heater going and then we were zipped up pretty tight in the sleeping bags. So we were pretty toasty all night. I had my laptop, we had cell service. So I was doing, I was actually doing a practice MCAT test on my MacBook there. But the girls, um, they're like high school age girls and they were camping and they didn't bring very much stuff. Some of the girls brought blankets. Some of them, like, I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> like they realized it was gonna get cold at night. But some of them got so cold they um, ended up sleeping in the car with the car running the heater going all night and me and my brother were like cracking up laughing like because they just didn't know what they were doing they actually came out there and uh brought pizza they had like uh, little caesar's pizza and we we had we made a campfire and we cooked on the campfire he brought like a skillet and we cooked up some burgers um actually some veggie veggie burgers out there and then of course we ate some junk food like our favorite nutty bars and we had some good stuff out there and the girls brought a pizza and they didn't know what they were doing some of them wanted to stay it looked like some of them sleeping in the car just wanted to leave there but when you go camping never underestimate how cold it's going to get at night because it gets cold 
I went camping by myself one time. I was in a state park. The entire park was mine. Oh, by the way, I should be bind wounding. So no one in the park but me. An entire state park, and they closed the gates at night. You can get out, but if you want to get back in, you have to use like your temporary code or something. So at night, it's so dark. You can see all the stars in the Milky Way. And I was camping there by myself, the only person in the park. And I started thinking about like horror movies like Friday the 13th and stuff like that. I still stayed. But then um, this was, I made sure it was a, a screened shelter. And I brought an air mattress. And I blowed up the air mattress and I had a blanket. And I thought with the space heater and the blankets, I should be warm enough. But the space heater, even on the lowest setting, kept tripping the breaker. Like it couldn't even handle a single small space heater. So it would trip the breaker. I'd go out and reset it. And it'd work for like 30 minutes and then it would just go off. And I was like, damn. So I ended up leaving in the middle of the night because I just couldn't handle it. It was too cold. So even I, I came prepared. I just didn't expect the breakers not to handle a space heater. I mean, it probably couldn't even handle like a, a blow dryer. Crappy breakers. But I went out there and I fished. Didn't catch any fish. And I didn't have fun. It was just me by myself. This was during the first, between the first and second year of med school. I didn't have to study in between that break. And I just wanted to be completely detached from school. Okay, so I'll see you guys when I'm ready to fight. Well, I think I'm going to try. I'm going to really try to just get one of these. I'm going to have to do that feign death thing. Or if, maybe I can just come to the left side and get the green guy. Because the green guy which should give me at least 2% experience. Just amazing amount of experience for a green kill. And it won't even take my life down too much. So if I can get this guy just a little bit. Let's take a seat. Really get his attention. He still doesn't notice me. Sit down. There he goes. All right, let's bring him away. I really wish I could listen to my normal music without copyright strikes. I feel like listening to, which is crazy, is because I hated this as a kid, but some Enya, some Caribbean blue on Enya. I listened to that a lot while I was studying in a busy cafe studying for my MCAT. I had noise cancellation headphones on and I would put on Enya. A lot of people like to put like fast beat music. I couldn't do that when I studied. I needed like really chill music. So as I learn more about medicine, different conditions, I am 100% sure I had ADHD as a kid, and I still think I have it today. I've never been diagnosed. I've never even seen, I haven't seen a doctor in a long time, but I'm pretty sure I have ADHD even today. And one of the main things that bothers me that I do, and it's something about people with ADHD, is I interrupt people a lot. Like I can't wait to start talking. So I blurt things out and I try not to but I blurt out stuff. Um, and that's something that people with ADHD do a lot. Like after I blurt and interrupt people, I, I immediately recognize I'm doing it and I, and then I walk away, you know, kind of upset myself, like quit interrupting people, but I can't stop. It's just something I do. And then when I was a kid, I had trouble sitting still in the desk. I was very disciplined. So it kind of masked my behavior. I was able to control it, but it would be it would be so uncomfortable. Like I couldn't sit still. I couldn't physically sit still. And I remember one time getting so upset about how uncomfortable it was to sit still in the desk. I couldn't I couldn't just do it. 
Um, I wanted to get up and run around, but I forced myself to sit still. And like my body was like trying to force me to get up and move. And uh, that's something that kids with ADHD do, but they tend to like run around, talk to the kids next to them, being disruptive. I was able to control it through a lot of effort because I was terrified of getting in trouble at school. But looking at my symptoms, I couldn't, like whenever I was in class, it was completely boring. I couldn't pay attention. I remember them teaching us how to use the Dewey Decimal System to do book report. I couldn't pay attention. I could not listen. And so I didn't know how to use it. And then I was spaced out. And then the teacher goes, okay, go find your books to start your book report. And I was like, what? What's going on? And I didn't know how to do it. I just walked around, pretended. I tried to figure it out on my own. I like opened up those card systems and then there was numbers and I was like, okay, uh, every other kid knew how to do it, but me. So I couldn't figure out how to get books. So I would just watch another kid pick a book in a section. I didn't even know what type of book we were supposed to look for. So I just picked up a book from a same section of another kid picked up. I didn't ask the teacher how to do it. I just, I just faked it. So I struggled through school because of ADHD. And then when I got older, because for a lot of people it goes away, the symptoms of not being able to sit still went away. But other symptoms remained, like blurting out things. So I could probably benefit from like some of those slow release, low potential for abuse amphetamines. Um, it would help me function better because I still have symptoms of ADHD as an adult. And it's one of those things that people, it's like everyone's got ADHD and a lot of people in med school had it and they were, they were being treated for it. And I'm thinking, man, I could have done so much better in med school if I had these medications because they would help control my symptoms. So anyways, I'm just randomly yakking. I'm at 25% experience so far. All right, these giants, they're everywhere. I want that green. There's two greens. I want the greens. And then I'd like to go inside and actually get the one with the hammer. I'm sure that hammer is called the hammer of flattening. And I'm wondering if it sells for a good amount. The problem is it's going to weigh me down. It's going to be very heavy. So that guy, I guess, runs the perimeter of this place. He just runs around it. Maybe we'll catch him when he makes a circuit. But so far, I have just trouble keeping up with the two spawns at the front door. Once I gain another level, um, I'm sure I'll be able to go inside and kill more. There is somebody in there. I see a dead body in there dead giant so I'm not sure who's in there but somebody is it's a good place to level especially with this experience event going on it's amazing all right he's running where'd he go can't find him all right I'm gonna go ahead and use mend can't loot now. Can't see his body. Alright. Yeah, there's some hammers in there. I can see them. The one that was standing there had a hammer. But I think someone else got it. It's probably really good XP. I mean, really good plat loot. Okay, as you can see, there's that one with the big hammer. I'm going to see if I can drag him over here with and get that hammer and then run and sell it. All right, let's throw a ranged weapon at him. Come here, boy. And he's green, so. Ah, the other one spawned. I was gonna drag him out the door. Oh, he crushed me. 
And he's got some amazing range. All right, so we're going to try to disarm him. It says... It didn't say anything. Oh, disarm it. Attempt to disarm failed. Well, dang it. Let's try again. It failed again. The skill is pretty low. He's got like a huge hammer in his hand. See it right there. Third attempt failed at disarm. I'm gonna knock that hammer out of his hands. Oh, I failed four times and he's running. He's only green. I wonder how heavy that hammer is gonna be. All right, there it is. Forest giant hammer. It only weighs eight. I was expecting it to be a lot heavier. Okay, so let's run out the door. Actually, I should make sure it's in the right bag. I don't think these guys have social aggro. Check it out. Oh, they do. Ah. Damn. About to hit feign death right now. Now I hit sneak before I stand up. They can still see me, but... It's one of the tricks you can, like, sneak. See, so yeah, I stand up and I'm sneaking. Okay. Turn sneak off. Alright, there's another guy. He's blue. I'll get him. I think I could handle him now. There's a guy over there. Let's get this one. And there's so many giants. It's a plague of giants. All right, I'm back over here. You got that guy by himself. Oh, stuck behind these rocks. Let's see if I can pull him over the bridge. All right, come here. Hey, beautiful. Ah, frigate. Throw a Chinese star right at his nuts. We used to call them Chinese stars as kids. I don't know if that's like some kind of incorrect terminology. Shurikens or something like that. Shurikens. As a kid, my cousin had one. He had one and he would... We went to some vacant trailer next to where I lived and he'd throw it into the door and it would stick. He was like vandalizing and stuff. He was a vandal. And we went to this vacant trailer and there was a stash of Playboys left behind in there. He knew about it so he would go into it to go look at the Playboys and he told us not, he goes, because I was like a kindergartner, he goes, go hang out in the other room and look for pennies. So um, I was there looking for pennies and nickels and stuff left behind. And then I went into the room to go show him some pennies I found in the air conditioning vent that was on the floor. And he was looking at the Playboys and I remember thinking, oh, that's so gross. Um, back in those days, like, well, they were hairy pictures. And I thought, ew, there's hairy, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, I thought it was disgusting. And I shouldn't have been seeing that stuff as a kid. But my cousin was older and he was very curious about Playboy magazines. But he had Chinese stars and I thought they were so cool. And he would throw them and they would stick into the aluminum door. And I really wanted to have one. And so there were some kids when growing up that knew how to make them out of paper. You know, you would like do some kind of paper folding and make Chinese paper Chinese stars out of them. I guess that was a cool thing. I never knew how to make them, but I thought it was pretty cool. Nowadays, kids have cell phones. Crazy. 
every kid's got a cell phone just about. If I was a parent, I'd be very worried about what the kids can access on cell phones. I know they send themselves, they send each other pictures and things like that. So, you know, got to be careful. So I'm up to 32% XP. Let's do a couple more. All right, since this guy's green, I think I'm going to go ahead and fight him with really low hit points. Oh, hurry up before the other guy comes. All right, we're going to pull him away. So yesterday in the news, you might have heard by now. By the time you're watching this, you'll know for sure. But Jimmy Buffett, the singer, died. I'm not sure what he died of, but he was only... He's only like 76 years old. That's kind of young. You know, when you're a kid, you think 76 is old, but as you're an adult, I'm like, that's not that old. So Jimmy Buffett died. He sang the Margaritaville song, which is the only thing I knew him for. Um, apparently he's a he was a billionaire as well, and that surprised me a lot. He owned like a franchise chain of places called Margaritaville. They might have been like resorts. I'm sure they served margaritas. Um, but I think they were like maybe places, a tropical resort, seaside bars or something like that. He owned that. So kind of sad people dying. Another person who died. I only knew him by his name. I was never big into politics as a younger person. Um, but a guy named Bill Richardson, who was 75, died. You know, and just, I don't want to delve into politics too much, but I was thinking, both of those people are younger than Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Donald Trump's 77, Joe Biden's like 80. Um, so these people passing away are younger than the top two contenders for the White House. I don't have a problem with age at all. Um, everybody ages differently. They say num age is just a number, which is true to some extent. My grandparents on my mom's side, one by marriage, not by blood, uh, both died in the last two years. I wasn't particularly close to either of them. They did take us on a trip to Yellowstone once as kids, and that was a memorable trip. But I think he died of like some vascular dementia, some series of strokes. Oh, cool, I'm gonna get that guy too. And she died of pancreatic cancer. So as soon as I was told that she got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, I was thinking, no oh, man, she doesn't have very long. Just the nature of the cancer. And of course, she only made it a few months. But, you know, we were all sure she was pretty healthy. She was the healthy one. So, health can take a quick dive at older age. Especially when you get like a cancer. If you live long enough, you'll everybody will get cancer, which is a shame. They're making advancements in cancer treatments. But man, that's such a bummer, you know? Wish you could just live to be like 200 years old and have good quality of life and just play EverQuest in our... I could be 120 years old playing EverQuest. Having a great old time in retirement. Playing EQ, drinking monster energy drinks and or, or what the gamers these days do, Mountain Dew and Doritos having a good time remember being young and pretty broke my friend and myself we would go get Totino's Tostino's pizzas with flat square pizzas they were like less than a dollar and we would microwave them <laughs> we wouldn't even cook them in the oven just too impatient we'd microwave them and we'd watch he was big in a WWF wrestling Kind of dating myself. It wasn't WC. It might have been WCW actually. It's whenever H Hulk Hogan came back and he was Hollywood Hogan, 
and they had the Wolf Pack and the NWO with Scott Hall and I think the wrestler's name was like Raven. Uh, Trip, I don't know, Triple H, Goldberg and stuff. Yeah. So it was during that area. He was really big into wrestling. I wasn't so much, but uh, if he turns it on, it's like, okay. Oh, I was going to log out and call it a day, but there's this one more. I got this big axe. In fact, let's go ahead and pull him. I'm at almost full life. 32% XP. Oh, man, he, he took the first hit. Yeah, we'll do it right here. All right, come on, you bastard. I want his sword. So let's start disarming. Of course it failed. The skill's really low, too. It's only like 27 disarm skill. It failed again, so there's two fails. Combining with the last attack, I try to use disarm. That's seven in a row. Ooh. You disarmed a forced giant evergreen. I don't see the weapon on the ground. Crap, where'd it go? He doesn't have it anymore. Hope I didn't lose it. Should be on the ground somewhere. Crap. So remember exactly where I'm standing because I want to get it. I don't see it though. This fight is way too close. So it should be somewhere where he's standing maybe, where his foot is. See if I can pull him back. Come on, dude. I don't see it. Lesson learned, don't disarm if you want to loot something. Crap. I wanted to see how much I could sell it for. All right, we'll, we'll like click on the ground everywhere and see if there's something I can pick up. Slow down, please. Come on, finish him off. I'm gonna go hurry up and get that loot. Oh, he picked it up. It's a giant tree flare. Nice. All right, that's gonna end this episode. I'm gonna go back and sell it. I think someone showed up. I think I saw somebody. Anyways, I, I disarmed it and he picked it up off the ground and he put it in his inventory. So thanks for watching guys. I'm gonna get on my other character, probably my wizard grouper character in Blackboro and play and see if we can uh, get some nice, oh, come on. I gotta get it for the loot. We have to do it for the loot. Bind wound. I hope it's that hammer of flattening. So I got the giant tree flare. We're at 50% XP, 50% life, and we are at 36% XP. I'm going to fight one more just to get that weapon. I want it. I want money. I did lose a lot of money after f buying this Wu's fighting mantle. Just ate up so much of my cash. All right, I'm gonna, ready to get the last guy of this episode. It's because he's got this big hammer and he's blue, so I'm gonna drag him away. Perfect, they didn't get hit when I was running away. All right, I'm gonna use men now. I got full life, I should be able to win this fight. Make sure the tree flare is in the weight reduction bag first. Yes, it is. Put this in our smaller bag. I'm getting full of loot. I'm almost completely full on loot. So after I get this hammer, I'm gonna run back to town and sell all these things and see. Can you hear the neighbor's dog?
She's got this funny little yappy dog. She just woke up, takes the dog out to go for a bathroom break. We're winning. We're doing good. And he's running away. Look how big his knees are. He looks like he's got a bursitis. Prepatellar bursitis, sir. Need to get that checked. Close the stamp thing. There it is. The forest giant hammer. I got two of them. It's a no trade item. I can't even sell that. To hell with that. It's one handed blunt. That's nice. One handed blunt. 10 damage, 35 delay. And that could be used by shamans. Maybe I ought to take Commissar out here and get one of those. Druids can wear it. Of course, monks can use it, but here's what I have. I have a 718, and it weighs 8. But a magician can wear it. Wizards can wear it. That's not too bad at all. That would be good for, like, a cleric. And a magician... It's not better than what I have, but if you're a solo self-found, you can definitely come and get those. Okay, guys, thanks for watching this episode of Giant Killing at the Forts. I'm going to get on one of my other characters. Take advantage of this experience bonus weekend. Having a great time. I'm off work. It's the weekend. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. See you guys soon, and thanks for watching if you made it to the end. Bye.